एकच मिनट फक्त फुल स्क्रीन होत नाही रे विनोद तर अल्टर करून पाहिलं मी ते स्लाइड शो वरती घेणार डायरेक्ट नाही इथे कशात वरती का हो वरती बरं आणि त्याच्यावर काय स्लाइड शो स्लाइड शो करायचा डायरेक्ट फर्स्ट स्लाइड पासून फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग ऑडिओ बंद करून टाकण हो करतो सर खर्च हे जात नाही त्यामुळे गोंधळ होतोय तो झाले सर आता नाही स्लाइड शो फ्रॉम बिगिनिंग बघा बरं सर नाही मी स्टॉप शेअर करतो आणि परत एकदा शेअर करतो ती हो so dear friends we'll discuss again the same topic so welcome to all of you on this behalf of divine school of homeopathy and we are learning since last 4 5 days a biochemic system of medicine we have learned certain things a short review on 17th may we have started with the theory of this part and we have learned what is exactly the 12 issues system so dr susler who has studied a physiology and pathological correlation in, and he has studied that there are 12 inorganic salts which are useful in the development of the human being and till they are at the molecular level if their action is maintained continuously the person remains to be the healthy but if there is yeah, they if they are in improper in proper quantity the chemical physiological equilibrium is bent and if there is a deficiency of any salt or salts it reflects in disturbance of molecular motion of them in the cell disturbs the equilibrium and expresses in the form of disease if you fulfill this deficiency by providing required salt in minimum quantity that is in semi dynamic doses the equilibrium is again maintained basically here concept is that it is not deficiency which you are fulfilling but if it is again a molecular motion which is disturbed because of that to maintain that molecular motion is one one of the important thing and your medicine should work at the same place that is the concept of shushdar and that we have studied and on first day we have learned the small remedy calcarea pure having very specific action on blood vessels it is having action specifically in the bone enamel of the teeth and elastic fibers of blood vessels and accordingly the pathology related with the blood tumors related with the dilatation of the blood vessels the very hard tumors then the uh, specifically pendulous abdomen or hanging belly the uterine displacements calcarea pure plays very vital role and i have discussed the osteophytes fights formation which can be dissolved with the help of a calcarea pure 
Then next day we have discussed regarding the uh, calcarea first. Before that we have learned short theory about the formation of tissue and how the inorganic salts, these tissue salts, takes part in the formation of a tissue. So and if anything is lacking, it ultimately reflects in the form of signs and symptoms and disease. That concept also we have learned and we have discussed calcarea first. As compared to the calcarea fluid, calcarea first is having a lot, lot of uh, action because it, it is present in number of parts of the body. This is present in blood plasma, corpuscle, saliva, this uh, gastric juice, bones, connective tissue, teeth, milk, and having a wider action. And that's why it produces number of pathologies. Here, it is very important part is that the regeneration, in case of regeneration, calcarea first plays a very important role. And that's why in biochemic system of medicine, whenever a patient comes to you with a fractured bone, first thing of a calcarea first or give it blindly in order to form a callus over there. Second important thing in those patients who comes to you for asking you as a tonic for their children, calcarea first plays a very vital role. It helps in growth and for height, increase in height. Initiate the growth, calcarea first plays a very vital role in order because it, has, uh, it is present in the albumin and that's why it is very important part which takes part, uh, help or which helps in the growth process. Then with bl blood coagulation, this remedy plays a vital role in anemia. It is the most important remedy. So we have learned regarding the calcarea first in the second lecture on 18th May. Then on 19th May, we have learned with the, another remedy that is the calcarea cell. And there was a short description, the concept of health and disease that we have learned earlier and followed by calcarea salt. Calcarea salt is a very short remedy. Specifically, this salt is present only in the bile and having very small action that okay. it, works, it works in the dead RBC to absorb the water from the dead RBC. And then those RBCs, dead RBCs can be taken out through the lymphatics of blood vessels and uh, function can be maintained. If it never happens, it ultimately finds outlet somewhere in the form of a debris or post formation. So calcarea cell deficiency can lead to a very much important skin affections where you there you will get yellowish first with crush on the body. And then we have discussed in yesterday's lecture, a big session we have learned uh, where Schussler's concept of a dose repetition and why reasoning all that we have learned, followed by a ferrum phosphoricum. Ferrum phosphoricum, don't forget this remedy in first stage of all acute inflammations, before the edema develops, before the suppuration develops, before the exudation develops. And that's why in all Every part, wherever there is first type of first stage of inflammation, this remedy plays a very vital role and pains are aggravated from motion better by cold, hemorrhage caused by hyperemia and fresh wounds caused by mechanical injury. This remedy plays a very, very vital role. So this is what in short regarding whatever we have learned up till now. We'll go ahead today with a short aspect of theory and then we'll learn a Kalimiraticum. So the preparation and the dose, a short topic which is there, we'll learn. The tissue remedies are prepared for therapeutic purposes like all homeopathic remedy. According to the decimal and centesimal scale, the intraturation or dilution. The crude, chemically pure article is taken and fracturated with sugar of milk, one part of drug to nine parts of sugar of milk for at least two hours. This gives the first decimal trituration. Each grain containing one tenth of the grain uh, of the cell, salt triturated. One part of this first decimal trituration is then used and other nine parts of the sugar of milk is added and again triturated two hours, which gives the second decimal trituration. This is what we learned in pharmacy. So this is nothing but a pharmacy, how to prepare those drugs. But Sussler's view, we have to understand over there. Equivalent to the first centesimal trituration, each grain containing one hundredth of the trituration, triturated cells. But experience has shown, as may be seen too from the illustrations above, that even this mixture, uh, this minute subdivision is 
too gross for many purposes in animal economy. And so this triturating and subdividing process has been kept up to the 6th, 12th and the higher preparations. Schussler's own procedure, how Schussler started doing this preparation. At first Schussler began with the 6 centesimal or 12 decimal treasures. But he very early in his practice adopted the 6 decimal preparation as the one most generally useful. Underline this, why 6x? This is the reason. Lately, the lower triturations of potassium and sodium salts, the third decimal, of others, the fourth, fifth, have been pro productive of equally good results. In the last edition of uh, Abjekert's therapy, that is in German, he says on this point, in my practice, I employ the sixth decimal trituration generally. Perumphos, silica, and calcarea fluor I usually give in the 12th trituration. This is his, his understanding or his use of regarding the remedy. So uh, there was his, ex his experiment explained something regarding those things. And that's why. So he has explained the 6x is the better potency to be advocated in such types of patients. In acute diseases, a dose consisting of a powder size of a pea should be given every hour or two. Acute disease, you can repeat it even one hourly or two. In chronic diseases, three or four times a day. Uh, there was a question yesterday from Dr. Mute, regarding this thing. The, here, it has been clearly Mute mentioned. Please, please keep your audios off. Please keep your audios off. In acute diseases, here he explains clearly regarding the acute diseases, a dose you can repeat depending upon the situation. And even you can repeat it one hourly, two hourly, three hourly, depending upon the case. And in chronic cases, you must keep it either three times or four times a day. I generally used to keep it twice a day and later on I keep it either once a day. The powder may be given dry on the tongue or dissolved in a spoonful of water. So both ways, but nowadays the tablets are available. So it better is always a tab tablet instead of giving a powder. Earlier there were only the powders available. And that's why he has mentioned about the powders. We ourselves have had the most satisfactory results from the six decimal saturation, rarely going higher, at times lower. And generally we prefer to give the selected remedy in solution by dissolving a good sized powder in a tumbler, half full of water, and administrating teaspoonful doses every hour or two. So this is the acute, in acute you can use this method that you can dissolve in water and you can uh, give it to the patient. That is one method of using the biochemic remedies. But generally I never do in my practice. I generally give it directly as a four tablets twice a day or depends if it is for acute four tablets three times a day. In that way, I used to give it. Um, the, these triturations may be molded into tablets, usually of a one grain each. So the tablet which you used to get is one grain tablet. So if you are giving four tablets, it is four grain tablets. Sometimes a big tablets are available. Those are called as five grain tablets. You get a big tablet, that is a five grain tablet. But regular biochemic tablet, it is one grain tablet. The dose being two or three taken dry on the tongue or dissolved in water. If liquid solutions are used, a few drops may be dissolved in water or pellets or discs may be saturated and given in that way. The latter is specially to be recommended with the children. So these are the different ways of utilizing the homeopathic medi uh, biochemic medicines. And generally, Schussler says that 6x is the better potency. So why, why uh, not to consider that potency if on, and only using the intellect, you can come down to 3x or go high up to the 12x. But 
most common. So at least in your OPD, all biogimics should have in at least in the 6x potency, so so that you can utilize them. And these 12 biogimic remedies and 28 combinations were, plays a very vital role in your practice. Now we'll go towards the one more point that is frequency of doses. In acute cases, a dose every hour or two. In severe painful affections, a dose every 10 to 15 minutes. In chronic affections, one to four doses daily. See, this is very clear about his concepts. So if you read it, then you can get it. And those are very clear. In suitable cases, the external use of the remedies is indicated and has been found useful. For this purpose, the lower triturations may be used. In determining the dose of the biochemic remedy, the amount of morbid products involved is so important, no important factor. For instance, a very small deficiency of a natural mold. Understand this concept is very important. For, for instance, a very small deficiency of natural mold in the cells of the epithelial layers of the serous sac may give rise to a massive serous exudation. And as minute a supply of an atramor corresponding to the deficiency may bring about the complete resorption of the exudation. So here it is not directly supplying the natramuraticum in the form uh, as a, um, the way allopaths give it in the material doses. It is in, when you treacherate to the 6x potency, it becomes as, 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 as good as a molecule. And that molecule, which was having an energy along with it, can act at the same molecular fault. The motion which is disturbed because of lack of deficiency, that can be created with the help of that. So this concept should be very clear with everyone, that you are not absolutely fulfilling the deficiencies, but you are improving the molecular motion which is disturbed because of deficiency or because of some trauma. Now we'll go ahead last slide of the theory i think so guided by the relative quantities of the cell salts each practitioner can select a proper dose of indicated biochemic remedy one milligram that is one to hundred grain to the second decimal trituration of a substance is estimated to contain 16 trillions of the molecules one milligram made kiti asta one grain made the 16 trillions of molecules system. According to this estimate, the sixth decimal trituration of it would contain about 16 billions. And this quantity is more than sufficient to restore the disturbed molecular motions to the normal. See, this is too important to understand. Underline this, this thing that this quantity is more than sufficient to restore the disturbed molecular motion. So what you are doing? you are restoring the disturbed molecular motion to the normal. And this concept one must understand while using the biochemic remedy. It may be urged that as an objection that the molecules of a given salt administered as a medicine would unite with their light content in the blood and thus render illusory any curative attempt. But this combination cannot take simply because carbonic acid present in the blood forms an isolating, isolating medium for the salts. So this, this is very important to understand. He has given all pros and cons. He explains over there, it may be urged as an objection that the molecules of the given salt administered as a medicine would unite with their light contents in the blood and thus render illusory in curative attempt. He explains immediately the reasoning, but this combination cannot take place simply because the carbonic acid present in the blood forms an isolating medium for these salts. So carbonic acid, which plays a very vital role when you administer these medicines. Now we'll turn. I, I have kept up to this level. Tomorrow we're going to discuss a big uh, thing regarding the theory part. And there is a correlation between the biochemic medicines and the homeopathic medicines. A big topic, nearly about 14, 15 slides topic is there. And that we have to understand because that again a scientific approach in order to learn the 
biochemic and homeopathic relationship which he has mentioned over there. So now we'll turn towards the Kali Muraticum, a short session on the Kali Muraticum, potassium chloride, Kali chloroquum, chloratum, Kali chloridium. These common names, chloride of the potassium or chloride of the potassium. And he has given one note over there, this drug must not be confounded with Kali chloricum. Kali chloricum is different and Kali muraticum is different. Whose symptoms are potassium chloride, potassium chloras, or potassium chloras, whose common name, uh, whose common name is chlorate of potash, and whose formula is KClO3. Here, the formula is only KCl. This has been proved, and authors of guiding symptoms have deemed them sufficiently similar to the Sussler's Kalimur to incorporate them in their work. So, in herring guiding symptoms, in the Volume number six, you will have Kalimuraticum, and he has included Susler's Kalimuraticum in his uh, Matra Medica. So this is this also gives a value that whatever work Susler have done, it has a merit. Herring was the person; he was the person who has written everything, and the Herring guiding symptoms they are considered to be a, one of the important monuments in the Matra Medica. And that uh, he also he has also given a lot of importance to these 12 tissue soils. Chemical properties. Formula is KCL, occurs in nature in mineral carnalite. It may be prepared by neutralizing pure aqueous hydrochloric acid with pure potassium carbonate or hydrate. It crystallizes in cubes, occasionally octahedron. The crystals are colorless and white and melt at a low heat, red heat, and volatilize. So the, this preparation is not so important for our point of view because we will not going to prepare the medicine. We will go ahead with the two important slides. First important is physiological chemical data. This salt, according to Schussler, stands in a chemical relation to the fibrin. So see the action very specifically on fibrin. Disturbances of its molecular action causes fibrinous exudation. Without the presence of this salt, no new brain cell formation would take place. Underline, these are very important things. So in the development of the brain cells, calimiraticum plays a vital role. This salt is found in the blood corpuscles, muscles, nerves, and brain cells, as well as in the intercellular fluids. So, kutu kutu asto, blood corpuscles madhi asto, muscles madhi asto, the nerves, brain cells madhi asto, as well as in the intercellular fluids. In its physiological character, it is closely related to the sodium chloride and many of the properties of which it shares. It is because, because both of them are chlorides, both of them carry a chlorine commonly and that's why both remedies are very close to each other in presentation. The relation being as follows. Kalimiraticum, four parts in 1000, whereas natrimiraticum, five and a half parts in 1000. That much, is the, that much is the content of both salts in body. If the cells of the epidermis, in consequence of any irritation, lose the molecules of kalimur, fibrin in the form of a white or whitish gray exudation is thrown off, and this is drying this in drying becomes a mealy eruption. Basically, if this happens that there is a disturbance in molecular motion, the fibrin in the form of a white or whitish gray exudation is thrown off. And that's why eruptions are having typical color. This is a, in drying becomes a mealy eruption. If the irritation extends to the tissue beneath the epidermis, both the fibrin and serum will exude and the involved part of the skin will be pushed up in the form of a blister. So blister formation, exudation, protein-rich fluid which comes out, kalimiraticum, and this is the second stage of inflammation. This is exactly what takes place in smallpox, cowpox, vaccine disease. Similar process can take place within and amongst the epithelial cells. If you will consider these disorders, you will find it out, Kalimur plays a very vital role. So number of times you will require theramphos along with the 
calimeraticum in such types of diseases and it works beautifully it it dissolves or it solves the problem very easily even i have used it successfully in herpes zoster cases whenever herpes zoster is there all newcomers are there or number of practitioners are there my experience is that along with restox you give ferampus and calimur three times or four times a day within three days everything should be settled that is my personal experience and i have done it n number of times and it works if the in, if the integrity of the affected tissue is again restored by the administration of calimur molecules then reabsorption or throwing of exudation occurs either result is attained probably by the production of hydrochloric acid formed by one part of chlorine from the potassium chloride with hydrogen the action of this hydrochloric acid consists in dissolving the fibrin in the formative nascent state so he has given the pathophysiology of how this potassium chloride works or how this calimeraticum works so this is a short action but what you have to keep in your mind the second stage of inflammation don't forget this word second important thing whenever eruptions which appears on the surface of the body which are mealy or grayish in color and sometimes associated with oozing or exudate or plastic fluid think of a calimeraticum very important so this plays very vital role in first and in the second stage of inflammations of every organ the way we have learned that ferum phosphoricum in the first stage of inflammation this remedy comes in second stage of inflammation we have learned the third stage of inflammation remedy that is calcarea self also so this is if you go with the inflammations understanding the inflammatory processes you in looking towards the disorder or looking towards the organ you can think of a remedy and you can prescribe remedy so in pathological understanding of the disease is very important for that purpose so i always say that clinical application in homeopathic practice plays a very vital role and you can find it out remedy very easily if you are clinically thorough enough and that's why you go on understanding the clinical aspect of each and every remedy you can treat them very nicely uh, there are three three more minutes i will ask vinod to conclude the meeting and join it again so that nick will have two more slides we'll discuss those vinod conclude kar and sabani join kar par so that there will be no break in the yes sir <clears throat>